So guys, kukula apple na kukula carrot, it doesn't sort out the plaque. You remember we said plaque is not material alba. Plaque is adhesive. It needs that sheer force. Your force ya kutoka kwa toothbrush, that's what it needs. We are not saying that you're, you're scrubbing thoroughly, but it needs that scrub-like force so that it's able to be dislodged from the tooth surface. guys dr kendi here and welcome back to my oral health diaries i hope you have been learning and enjoying the previous episodes today i am going to be tackling the big topic about dental plaque many times you've had me mention plaque and say that plaque is bad for you but i've never really gone into it and explained what plaque is and you know why we are really saying that plaque is a bad thing so plaque like we discussed is normally that substance that accumulates on the teeth and is colonized by bacteria or the bacteria comes and inhabits that area and then it causes disease in the oral cavity so i'm just going to go back and you know explain how plaque actually forms now your oral cavity is not sterile hakuna sterility apple there are very many different types of bacteria most of them are good, but some of them are not so good. So the teeth are, are, are normally covered by this bacteria kind of, but the first layer that covers the teeth is normally something we call a pellicle. A pellicle is normally formed by the proteins that are in the saliva, which is actually a kind of protective mechanism for the teeth. So anytime the teeth come into the mouth, then they are covered by this pellicle and then now on top of this pellicle is where now the bacteria start coming and attaching onto so initially they are kind of like good bacteria and then we have bad bacteria that may come like later on okay so initially before we get to dental plaque what we normally have is something called material alba so this is just food substance that is basically very soft and it can just easily be um, like um, removed from the surface of the enamel or the surface of the teeth. So if your dentist just, if you go to the dentist, for example, and they use that three-way, we call it a three-way, that thing that we use to spray in your mouth, if we spray that water, then that layer is just going to come out. That's material alba. Then after material alba now is when you form plaque. So I say, let's just be honest here that <laughs> when you come to the dentist and you've just eaten, and then we still tell you that there's plaque, we actually can't tell the difference between the food that you have just eaten and plaque. Now plaque is different because it is more adherent or it's more sticky onto the tooth. So even if you spray water onto it, it's not going to come out, that's plaque. Then from plaque, you now move onto something we call calculus or what people like referring to as tata. So calculus is when now this plaque has been inhabited by minerals, calcium, phosphorus, um, some fluoride, you know, and then it hardens in a kuakama mawe. So now it's not, you're not even able to remove it with brushing. But with plaque, actually, you can remove by brushing, but remember the water cannot remove it. So now, plaque, how I like to think about plaque is plaque is like a sellotape. So I'm going to have demonstration aids here that will help us understand. So this is cell tape, and plaque behaves like cell tape. Why does it behave like cell tape? Because plaque is a biofilm. So this is our one like strip that I'm going to be using to show the effect. You see how sticky it is? That's how plaque is. It's basically just sticky, but it's sticky double side. So it's sticky on the tooth and then sticky still on the other side. So I'm going to be demonstrating why plaque is bad based on my sellotape analogy. So, okay, based on sellotape and also based on something else, plaque is, is something we call a biofilm. Biofilms are bad as opposed to plactonic bacteria because then they are kind of 
uh, housed or they live in a community, just like a gated community. That's how biofilm is. So biofilms are kind of protected. There is a barrier. So everything that the bacteria is producing within that biofilm is concentrated because it can't leave the biofilm. Another very bad thing about plaque being a biofilm is this bacteria come and live inside that biofilm and today we have many analogies it's like bricks so um bacteria number one will just come and it's just like that on its own but because it has this it's we call them receptors then it's able to attract another type of bacteria and they kind of stick together and it continues and more bacteria comes on and they build a whole big kind of like <laughs> united front. So that is what plaque is, an area that is basically bad, it's a barrier. So this concentration of acid is inside there. The bacteria, the bad ones, the good ones, they are all inhabiting that area. So a biofilm in the mouth is not a good thing to have. So that's why we are really, really fighting against plaque. If you remember in our video about oral hygiene, we talked about disclosing tablets. That's how you would essentially know how to identify plaque if you really want to do that on your own at home. So our biofilm. Now, what are the factors that affect plaque formation in your mouth? The first factor I would say is topography or how the teeth look like or how they are shaped. Teeth are not flat surfaces. So anywhere there's a depression, anywhere there's like an irregularity, then plaque tends to form more around that area because that shear force, ile force ya kutoka kwa toothbrush, haifiki, it doesn't reach that place. So inside that place, the fissure, inside a groove or a pit on the tooth, that is where most likely where plaque will form and thrive most. Okay. Another thing that would affect plaque formation is surface roughness. Now, if something is rougher, then it tends to accumulate more things. So if your teeth are not smooth, that's why even like with people with calculus, they will get more plaque because calculus is not smooth. The enamel surface is normally a smooth surface. But when you get calculus, it's rough. So then it accumulates more plaque on top of it. Another thing to consider under this thing about being rough is if you have a restoration or a filling that has been done you would want it to be smoothened out properly which i'm sure your dentist makes sure that you know that is done and if you're getting it done it's good that you know that you want a proper and um a properly done or properly finished filling um with this thing about roughness is where i think us dentists are mostly concerned about the, the junction between maybe a crown and a tooth because most of the times these are not smooth surfaces so these are some of the things that would affect plaque formation so the rougher the surface is then the more plaque that is formed on top of that surface another thing that contributes to plaque formation is gum inflammation and saliva now Normally, if your gum is inflamed, you will find that there's more plaque that forms around that area. And your gum can be inflamed for a number of reasons. We are going to discuss that on another episode. So anywhere where your gum is inflamed or enlarged, then you'll find that there's a larger, larger amount of plaque, mostly because of the type of fluids that are produced when your gum is inflamed. So plaque tends to accumulate faster. Another contributing thing to plaque formation is saliva. Now, saliva tends to, you know, of course, help when it's flowing in the mouth. It, it tends to help because we would like to believe that it cleans uh, material out of the mouth. But as we've said, even saliva cannot remove plaque. It may only deal with material alba, you know. So saliva plays a role. If there is a decreased um, salivary flow rate, then you'd find that plaque accumulation is higher. Another thing that contributes to plaque formation, unfortunately, is it's, a, it's kind of like a genetic thing or individual differences. Some people may be 
um, heavy plaque formers and others may be light plaque formers. This depends on a variety of factors that come into play. As we said, the first one, of course, saliva, because we are all different, so our saliva is not the same. The way our saliva flows is not the same. Our teeth are shaped differently. So individual differences, you don't expect that um, your, <laughs> your, even your partner or your child is going to have the same type of teeth as you or your saliva is exactly the same. It's not the same. Um, another thing that I think let's let's just discuss because people think that it actually it actually matters with a plaque is age. Now, age on its own is not the thing that would cause plaque accumulation. Studies have been done and it's shown that age has been proven not to be a defining factor when it comes to quality or quantity of the plaque. So quality of the plaque is when we look at the plaque and check what type of bacteria inhabit this biofilm. Are they the very aggressive bacteria? Most of the times the aggressive ones are the ones that are like anaerobic or the, the, the bacteria that do not use oxygen and the ones that are very destructive. Those are the very bad ones, doesn't affect. And then of course the quantity is the amount. So is it a lot? Is it little? Imagine age doesn't affect. So you, you, can't, you cannot justify having poor oral hygiene just by the fact that, you know, I'm a bit older. It doesn't really come into play when it comes to plaque. The only thing that has actually been proven to be true with age difference is that as you age, your gums are going to respond more aggressively to plaque. So as you age, if you get more plaque, then more inflamed, you get someone similar age, probably same amount of plaque, no, then their, their gingivitis or gum disease is probably going to be easier or less, you know? So age, hapo, doesn't really matter, but at least we've demystified that fact. So these are some of the factors that would essentially affect how plaque forms and, and how it would build up in your oral cavity. Plaque, as we said, is the major reservoir or the major area where bacteria inhabits. And this bacteria is what causes a lot of destruction. This bacteria is responsible for decay. This bacteria is responsible for gum disease. This bacteria is responsible for periodontitis, halitosis, and most of the oral diseases that are, you know, associated with infections. Of course, there are other things that, that um, happen in your oral cavity that is not infection, but more common things occur commonly. <laughs> okay, the final factor that I think I would like to discuss as something that may affect plaque formation. Why I am saying may is because the studies that have been done have shown that it doesn't really contribute significantly to reducing the plaque that is on top of your teeth. Spontaneous tooth cleaning or tooth brushing. By spontaneous tooth brushing or cleaning, I am referring to chewing of fibrous substances or maybe chewing gum. So chewing apples, carrots and those things, you know, there was this belief that you, if you could chew something fibrous or something hard, then you would be able to clean your teeth. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Most of the studies that have been done have disapproved <laughs> this myth. So guys, kukula apple na kukula carrot, it doesn't sort out the plaque. You remember we said plaque is not material alba. Plaque is adhesive. It needs that sheer force. Your force, ya kutoka kwa toothbrush, that's what it needs. We are not saying that you're, you're scrubbing thoroughly, but it needs that scrub-like force so that it's able to be dislodged from the tooth surface. So today we have discussed plaque. I am still going to emphasize disclosing tablet would be really nice to have in your house when you want to assess yourself, just to check to make sure that you're actually doing a good job with your oral hygiene. The dentist that you have, you know, your dentist is also there to check and make sure that you're doing a good job. But now that we are all aware about what plaque is and what factors contribute to plaque formation, then I think we can make better decisions, you know, when we are coming to our brushing. 
Thank you so much for joining us on this week's episode of my Oral Health Diaries. I hope you learned something about plaque. I hope we all know what plaque is. So next time your dentist says that you have plaque, you have an idea of what they are talking about. Thank you for joining us. Kindly continue liking, subscribing and sharing. We sincerely appreciate your support and let's continue learning more about oral health. I'll see you again on next week's episode. Quality, the quantity of the bacteria is basically is at quant, qu <laughs> I'm going back. <laughs> okay. Matamushi, ni shida ya matamshi. Let me go back. Okay. The quality, the quantity.